As is Hashem, today we're holding in the Sechis Brachas Nun Amud Beis. Today's Amud is Nun Amud Beis. Mincha is 545. 545. Today's Amud in the Brachas is Nun Amud Beis. We are going to start at the Mishnah on Nun Amud Aleph, and we're going to have three sections in today's learning. First section we'll deal with is joining and splitting from a zimun. Means there are times that you could join and there's also chidushim, as we'll see, you're not necessarily allowed to split. We'll get into those cases. The second section we'll deal with is the machlaikis about undiluted wine. What bracha do you make on that? Eliezer said ha'etz. Chacham say you could still say agefa and we'll get to that as well. And the final section of today we'll deal with is the iser really of mistreating food. You're not necessarily allowed to deal with bread or other foods in a way that causes it to become ruined, and we'll learn about that as well at the end of the Amud today. So, as is Hashem, let's get started at the Mishnah, about 10 lines, 10, 12 lines from the bottom of Nunamud Aleph. Zog the Heliga Mishnah. Gimel Shach Luka'achas. If three people ate together. Einan Rashoyan Lichalik. Now, this is very mistaber, it's very logical. They're not allowed to split up. Why are they not allowed to split up? Because they have a chiv of zimun, and the moment that they've eaten together, they have that mitzvah, and once they split up, they lose that zimun. So male, they're not allowed to split up and bench separately. V'chein dalad, v'chein chamisha. Same thing is with four, same thing is with five. You take out, you split into two groups, you won't have a zimun anymore, and that would be an issue. But, vav nechlakin arasara. If you have from six until ten, veload bechlal means really six till nine people. You could split up into separate groups. We actually mentioned yesterday in the last Talmud, which is that you could still have a zimun in each of these subcategories, and therefore that would be perfectly acceptable. However, says the Mishnah, if you have ten people who eat together, they're not allowed to split up until twenty. Meaning. If you have 10 to 19 people who eat together, they wouldn't be allowed to split up because there's a chiyuv of zimun that they have that's even stronger, which is to say zimun nevarech elekeinu. So male, if you'd split up, you wouldn't be able to do that anymore. But if you have 20 people, you could split up again because you have two groups. So you could still say nevarech elekeinu. Continues the Mishnah on a second halacha. If you have two groups of people who are eating in one house. Now let's say it means one room, one large area. Perhaps this could happen at a wedding, somewhere that a lot of people are eating. If you have these two groups, some from each of these groups could see each other. They're actually allowed to join for Zimun, and they could join together. Let's say there's two in one place or one in the other, or there's five in one place, five in the other. They could join for Hilchas Zimun. But if they cannot see each other, they have to bench separately, make Zimunim by themselves. Third halacha of the Mishnah. The wine back in the day was extremely harsh, very powerful. They used to dilute it three parts water, one part uh, wine. So Rabbi Yezer's opinion is the bracha of hagefen is dedicated to wine when it reaches its elevated state. It means beforehand it's just squeezed grapes. It's water of grapes. Concentrate. Grape concentrate. Now, when it becomes wine, whatever is known as wine, it's hagefen. But until you put water in, it's not drinkable. It's too strong, and therefore it wouldn't be hagefen until you put in water. We'll see in the Gemara, it would be ha'etz, actually. It's like uh, the fruit still would be, ha- would be ha'etz. They say, no, you could still make hagefen, even if you haven't diluted it with water yet, it's still allowed to be uh, drunk and made bore pri hagefen. Now, the Gemara says, the first part of our Mishnah said, if three people eat together, they're not allowed to split up. So the Gemara says, what's the Chiddush in that? that We learned in an earlier Mishnah, right, was the Mishnah, the beginning of the sixth parak, the Mishnah said, three people eat together, the Chayav and Zimun. So what's the Chiddush that our Mishnah is adding? So the Gemara gives three Chiddushim that one could read into our Mishnah. First one, the first Chiddush is the first version of Yabba Amr Shmuel, which is as follows. If three people sat to eat together, now the way the Rishonim speak, they said they haven't eaten. What do you mean they haven't eaten? They, they ate a little bit. They didn't even eat kezayis necessarily. They sat down, they ate a little bit, they didn't eat necessarily a significant amount. Already, the Chiv of Zimun is to some degree Chal, and Einan Rashayin Lechalik. They're not even allowed to split up then because they already have some joiner creating a Chiv of Zimun between them. First Teretz. Does that mean they, they washed? 
Well, Chaira could be, yeah. I mean, because what they're talking about Zimun. What if they just um, They're talking about Zimun. But I'm saying Zimun is for benching. They just sat down to eat and they haven't washed yet. They, they had some, I don't know. Uh, yeah, an appetizer. I hear. I think that's how the Rishonim explain this: is that they had to have washed and eaten something, lechayra, not a kezayis necessarily, but yeah. So they wouldn't be allowed to split up. Lishna Now there's an alternative uh, explanation of that memra, which would be another pshat in our Mishnah. Am Rabbi Abba, Am Shmuel, Hachikatani. This is what the Mishnah means to teach us. Gemel sheyashvu leechal kachas. If three people sat to eat together, afal pishikol echad veechad oichal miki karay. Even though each one is eating from his own loaf of bread, means they're not necessarily eating from the same sharing, food even. Sharing. They're not sharing. I'm he's eating from his bread. bread. He's eating from his bread. Right. So maybe you'd say, well, that's not a joiner. And therefore they could split. Nonetheless, nonetheless, Mikol what we're going to say is, they're still not allowed to split up because that's already a kfiyas for a chiyuv of zimun. Third answer in our Mishnah of the Chiddush, which is, inami, and this is really a major Chiddush. The Gemara says like this, I would not have thought this logically. Inami kihad Rav Huna Amara, kihad Rav Huna, Dam Rav Huna, Rav Huna says the following Chiddush, and we're going to put this back into our Mishnah. Gimel Shebo mi Gimel Chaburais. You have three people who separated from three different groups that were eating separately. Okay, and we'll see in a moment, each of these groups had three people. So each one had a chiyuv of Zimun. Let's see. Einon Rashoin Lechalik. It's like this. You had three groups of people eating separately. One of the individuals in each of the groups separated, and then that created a new chabura of three individuals who had come from a chabura of a chiyuv of zimon, but they hadn't benched yet. So in such a case, they become a joined group, and they're not allowed to split up because now they have a chiyuv of zimon. But the Gemara qualifies. Hold on, hold on. Um, hold, hold on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Gemara qualifies this because that's a very vague memra. So Amar of Chizda, of Chizda says, so Firstly, we have to say, each one came from a group of three people. So you had three different Chaburas eating separately. And each of the three Chaburas, there were three people, which means there was a Chiv of Zimun in those Chaburas. So if one individual leaves those, each of those three Chaburas, now they join together. They can't split up without doing a Zimun. Omar Rava, and Rava fur, r- further qualifies this, turning to Nunamud Beis. Maran, Ela Delay Akadimu Hanach, and I don't to go Rashi here in a minute, but Delay Akadimu Hanach Ve'azmin Alayu Beduchtayu. What happened? The way Rashi explains it is, there were four chevra, okay? Four chevra in each of the groups. The Gemara before says three, but the way Rashi explains it is like this. The only way that if they would join together after, they wouldn't be allowed to split up and would have a chiyov of zimun, is if you had four chevra sitting somewhere else. One of the guys wanted to leave. Before he left, he listened to the zimun of the other three people. Now in such a scenario, they, if, if, they, if they didn't do that, in Zeloy was they didn't do that. So since there was a chiv of Zimun for this fellow, he did not hear them lead a Zimun before he walked out. Now, he didn't bench with them, but he didn't hear their Zimun. So then when he joins up with another two people who were in the same situation, the chiv of Zimun remains. And since the chiv of Zimun remains, they're not allowed to split up anymore. They now have a chiv to create a Zimun. Avol azmun alayu beduchtayu. But if originally, in their original groups, they made a zimun. He walked out right after the zimun, so he didn't hear Birka Samazan, and then they joined together afterwards. The Allah is Parach Zimun Minayu. Zimun has left them. Right. Means they were Yoitze Zimun. There's no Chiyuv anymore of Zimun, right. so they don't have to get together and they could actually split up. Kedai, let's just go through that Rashi. Look at that top Rashi on Nunamud Beis. Akdimu Hanach. So these three groups that they had separated from, Fa'azmun Alayu, and they had done a Zimun with them. Tahani of these. Kegoinim Hayu Arba Bechol Chabura. Meaning, for example, there were four people in each of the three Chaburas. Vinishar Bechol Achas Kedei Zimun, and he left. Means this guy went to the market. He left three more people there. And these people that left wanted to go out to the market before the end of the seuda. So in such a scenario, he didn't even hear the zimun. Now that he joins with two other people, he has a chiyuv of zimun. This is a big chiddush in my opinion. I mean, I would not have thought this logically. What does it mean? It means you have three chevra from three different groups who ate separately. Two, for, three, for each. For each, let's say. He, before they did a zimun, he walked out. 
whatever the reason is. So he didn't hear the Birka Sazimun. He didn't hear that. Now, when they join together after, they create a Zimun, and they have an Isser. They're not allowed to separate from each other, even though they didn't eat together in the first place. Point that out. That's that's what comes out they, from when this. When they get together, they don't have to eat something together? Nothing. That does, that's they, not, not, they make a Zimun. Exactly. That's what it would appear. It's very, very, very interesting case. I mean, right. Because, definitely. Because they never ate together. There's right. just three people that never ate together. That's why it was to me also a big chiddush. Maskim. Omar Rav Amin Allah. So Rav says, where do we find a precedent for this principle? The Tanah, and there's a Mishnah in Mesechus Kalim. We know that the halacha is, if something's considered a kli, a vessel, it's able to be mekabel tuma. If you break it from its initial status of kli, it loses the preceding tuma. Now, if you rebuild it, it becomes a kli again, and then it could become tame moving forward. But it doesn't retain or reattain its old tuma status if it was tame before. So the Mishnah there says as follows: Mita shenig If you have a bed that half of the bed was stolen, I don't know why they chopped half the bed. They stole half the bed, and so now it's not a kli anymore. Or half the bed was lost. Or there was a brotherly or a partnership divide, and they split it up into two pieces. So now it's no longer ro'i l'kabel tumah. So tahira, meaning even if it was tummy before, it's lost its status of kli, and now it's uh, tahor, even if it was tummy before. Hechzi ruha. Now, if they returned the pieces to each other, and they rebuilt it, so the Mishnah there in Kalim says, now moving forward, it's able to become Tameh. Mikanu la'aba, so the Gemara is Medaik. What do you see? It's only able to become Tameh in. Moving forward, it could become Tameh. Lemafre aloi. But it does not reattain its old status of tuma, even though it was Tameh before it had lost its shame kli, its name of being a vessel. Alma, what do you see, says the Gemara? Kievan de Palgua, once it's split, it lost its status of Kli. Parach la tuma mina. Its tuma has left it. Hachinami says the Gemara in a similar sense. Kivan de azmun alayhu. Once they already heard a zimun in the original group, even though they didn't bench yet, but they heard zimun in the original group. Parach zimun minayu. The chiyuv of zimun has left them, and they don't have to make a zimun with the two new chevra that they bump into later. Okay? That's how Rashi Lechaira learns over here. Do you want to just take a look at Rashi? It's Kedai Rashi to see. You see the Palgua? You see that Rashi? Al Makivan de Palgua, that Rashi. Al Makivan de Palgua, since they split it, Pakashemita Mina, the name of a bed is no longer on it, the Shem Tuma as well as the name of Tuma. Afal Gavda Hadar Hidrua Vaharehi Mita, even though they rebuilt it and now it's a bed, Loi Hadra Tum Asa. Its status of Tuma does not return. It could regain Tuma in the future, but not from what was. Hachinami says Rashi here also. Even the Paka Shem Shloishaminayu. Since the name of three people has left them, he pardam when they separated. Means when these guys went out to the market, they lost the three people. The Shem Zimun Al Yedei She Zimnu Ar Mishoynim Aleyem. And also they heard a Zimun before they walked out. Afal Gav Dahadri Lechlal Shem Shloisha. Even though afterwards they bump into two more people, so that now they're together with three people. Lehadri Lechlal Zimun. Nonetheless, they don't return to the Chiyuv of Zimun like the beginning because they already heard a zimun. But if they hadn't heard a zimun from the original groups, they wouldn't lose the chiv of zimun. Meaning to say is, now they would make a chiv, a zimun together with the two people they bumped into. It's a chiddush in Allah as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Even the lotion of the go to the shuk, yeah. I mean, you're in the middle of eating, how could you leave? How could you? He's, uh, he, he had a big business deal. I don't know. <laughs> like, I hear, I hear, I hear. Okay. If you say to me, they, you know, they went to another room. Huh? Uh, they went to the, it's like the middle, the middle of the Suda. I said, I'm going to go to Yes Market uh, right. to do some shopping. I'm right. going to find two of the people and we're going to... Let me just tell you the Kiddush the Rush learns over here. He even takes this a step further. Listen to this. The Rush learns that even if they would, these three guys who already heard Zimun in their original groups would gather together and would eat together also. So what would you say in that case? If, if what, if they ate more after when they gathered together, but they already heard Zeman in their original groups. What would you say in that Unless case? Unless they start a new meal, it doesn't matter. They've already been yoytze Zeman, yeah, they don't make yeah, a new yeah, Zeman. Yeah, no, that, 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 you hear that, that and it, even yeah. if they don't eat together, if they hadn't heard Zeman in their original group, says the Rush, Right. They have a chiyuv of Zeman now. So really, their new consumption isn't the key. The key is, did they hear Zeman or not? That's how the Rush learns the Chiddush over here.
Let's go weiter. You could join us. Please take a seat if you want to. There's actually a Gemara here if you want. Zog the Gemara weiter. This is the second section of our Mishnah. Our Mishnah said, Beis Chaburis, if you have two groups, if some could see the others, they could join for Zimun. So the Gemara says a Chiddush, which is Tana, Im ye shamish beinayim, shamish mitzarfan. If there is an attendant serving both parties, even if they can't see each other, it joins the two parties together and they could join together for Zimu. Let's move on to the next section. We're holding Nunamud Beis, about 10 lines down. In Mivarchan Aliyayim. We had a Machlaikis in the Mishnah. Koran Tribaliezer, if you have undiluted wine, that's not yet reached the Chashivas of wine. Ah, oh, the Heligal wine. Look at that. In Mivarchan Aliyayim. So it hasn't reached the status of wine yet. So you wouldn't say Agefen, you'd say Bore Priya Eitz. And Chacham said, no, you can make Agefen on undiluted wine. So the Gemara explains from a Brisa. Tan Rabban and says the Brisa. Yayin, Achalainas, and Lesaychamayim. If you haven't yet put water inside of the Wine. So, like we said, it was too strong and it wasn't uh, drinkable. Rabbi Ezra says, you wouldn't say Bore Piragafen, rather you'd say Bore Piragafen because it's like the original fruit. It's like the way Rashi says, it's like the juice of the fruit, but that's not considered wine yet. So it's eights. And you can use it for Natilas Yadayim. For Natilas Yadayim, you need water. This is not wine, this is water that comes from grapes. So therefore, you can actually use that for washing your hands. But once you put water inside of the wine, so Rabbi Lazar says, you do make Bore Piragafen because that's Nishtanali Iluya, that's already its significant level of wine. But you can no longer use it for washing until you die him because now it's taco wine that's not water anymore now I put any water into it? What's that? Is putting water into it? No, if you, if you put water, you can't use it for Natilas Yadayim. Yeah. Before you put water, you could, Dr. Rebbe yeah. Now, Rebbe Yezer says you can use it for Natilas Yadayim. seems to be he's not chayshish for the damage or ruining it by using wine or something more chashuv for Natilas Yadayim. We'll get back to that in a minute. Whether you've diluted or undiluted, you can make Bore Piragafen. We'll see, they say it's already considered wine even before the dilution takes place. And you cannot use it. That's not water, so you can't use it for Natilas Yadayim. Now, Rashi explains because it's a Hefzid Eichlin type of issue, meaning to use something of Hashivus, even undiluted wine, for washing your hands, it's inappropriate. It's a damage to the wine. You're ruining the wine. That's not appropriate. So the Gemara says, Kaman Azla Hadam or Shmuel, which, um, which Tana will Shmuel the Amoira follow? When Shmuel says, Oisa Adam Kotzracha Bepas. Shmuel Paskins, Msecha Shabbos, that you're allowed to use bread for all of your purposes, meaning not necessarily for eating, for decorations, for other mundane purposes that perhaps could ruin it too. So who does he seem to follow? So there he's trying to explain it is, Kaman Kirabliezer. It's for sure like Rabbi Eliezer, because Rabbi Eliezer says you could wash Natilas Yadayim with undiluted wine. Like the Chachamim, it's not necessarily clear but certainly it's like Rabbi Eliezer. Om Rabbi Yesi, Rabbi Chanina, Maidim Chacham, the Rabbi Eliezer, the Chacham, are Maidim to Rabbi Eliezer. The Kais Shel Bracha, that when it comes to wine that's being used for a Kais Shel Bracha, let's say, Kiddush, Havdalah, Chasana, something of significance. There, you shouldn't use, you shouldn't make a bracha on it unless you put water inside of it. Meaning, even though you could make hagefen generally on undiluted wine, according to the Chachamim, for kais shel bracha, you have to put water. Some have the minog in general to put a little bit of water when you make a bracha on the wine for kais shel bracha, just as like it's a shtigl zecher of what was maybe, but uh, really today our wine is drinkable as is. What? Kabola. Oh. You can't drink the way it is. You have to put the water into it. You have to put water into it. Yeah, so it's not putting in the water. You can't, you, huh? you, you, what, what did you say? Yain Chai. Oh. Shrinko. Shrinko? Shrinko. Rinse out. That's the coast. That's the, that's the coast. Done for the kais. Okay, kais shel bracha. My time, or what's the reason? Amar Rav Ashaya, but inon mitzvah v'ina mufchar. Because when it comes to a mitzvah, it has to be more ideal in the best way. So even though, yeah, you could make hagef in an undiluted wine, that's not ideal. So for the mitzvah, put a little that's water sure. inside. Rabban and lemay chazis. The Gemara says, I understand. You can't really drink it straight. So according to the Rabbanon, why would you say agefen on undiluted wine? It has to be that in some purpose, you could use undiluted wine for drinking. But what is that for? Rabbi Zeir Chazi the Koraiti. So Rabbi Zeir says there's a certain beverage called Koraiti. Farshim here speak out, Koraiti was where they would use undiluted wine, mix it with honey and pepper, 
This is all from Art Scroll. He quoting a quoting a ritz actually. Or clear water and balsam oil, the kitzer. They would mix, but it was actually mostly undiluted wine. So since it was mostly undiluted wine, and they would drink it with a little bit of an additive, you see undiluted wine could be drunk straight as well. Memelo, that's considered nishtan aliyuluya. Even if you don't add anything, you make bari priagafen on that. Tanaraba, no, new section, third section of the day. Let's talk about not damaging food, ruining foods. First, we talk about bread. There are four things said about bread. Rabbi Anayana says it all has to do with not ruining them, right? uh, making bread disgusting, ruining it. The first one is we don't put raw meat onto bread. You put raw meat onto bread, it ruins the bread. So we're not allowed to do that. Two, also, you can't put a full cup of uh, liquid over the bread because it might ruin it. Nor can you throw bread. Very interesting. Some people have a minag, I've seen, you don't pass bread hand to hand, they chuck it across the table. Zak the Gemara, if it ain't... You can't put a cup of over it, over it, because you don't want to spill on it and ruin it. If it you can't throw it. Put it down, but some people throw it. You know, some people throw it? Yeah, I don't know, Svartim, I've seen. Exciting, it gets exciting. Chassidim. Shlach lach mechal Give out. I think there's chilukim that are made, Taka. It's not so simple. But anyways, ein zorkin as a We're going to see l'chaira. When it comes to bread, it shouldn't be done derech b'zayon l'chaira. That's the pshat. The ein zayim chen as a Nor can you put a, 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 a tray of food over bread. Again, because it might ruin the bread. Amemar amar zutra v'ravashi kar churif tabadi adadi. So these three amaram. Amemar amar zutra v'ravashi were eating bread together. I see the kamayu tamri very mighty. Now they brought in front of Amemar amar zutra v'ravashi Dates and oh. pomegranates. Shaka Marzutra Pasak Lakami de Ravashi Distina. Okay, I'm gonna look like Rashi here. Marzutra took a piece of meat and he threw it. Pasak means he threw distina, a piece of meat in front of Ravashi. So Marzutra took a piece of meat, it was cooked meat, and he threw it in front of Ravashi. So Amali Ravashi turned to Marzutra and he said, Lamar Don't you know that we learned you're not allowed to throw food? And in, in kindergarten, they teach you that. Don't throw food. So the Gemara Marzutra said back, that's talking about bread. Bread has a special significance. You're not allowed to throw it. But other foods, you could. We learned in a brisa, just like you can't throw bread, you can't throw other foods. So Marlene Marzutra said back, I'll tell you back, another brisa says you could throw other foods. So there's no kasha. This is the, this is the rule. If something's going to get ruined when you throw it, you're not allowed. If it's not going to get ruined, you could. Now, it's very important to note, notable exception is you're not allowed to throw bread. Whether it's going to get ruined or not, you're not generally allowed to throw bread. But other foods, which perhaps won't get ruined, it's not such a problem. So we threw cooked meat, it's not going to get ruined. Tanur Rabban and the Gemara says on a similar note. It's very interesting. Simchas Chas and Vekala, not just today we do all kinds of Mishagasin. They used to do things to make people excited. So what do they do? They used to pour wine through pipes in front of the chasen and kala. So Rashi says, but they wouldn't ruin it. They had bowls at the bottom that would catch it. Apparently this was a good omen or something. They were allowed to do that. And they were also allowed to throw in front of them uh, cooked grains, roasted grains, and also uh, nuts in the summer now, it's very important in the summer because the ground was dry. So even if it would hit the ground, it was still edible. You could still eat it. But not in the winter, because in the winter it was muddy and these foods would get ruined. But with baked rolls, the Farshim say even if it's not bread, bread, you're not allowed to throw. But even other things than bread, you wouldn't be allowed to throw, whether it's the summer or the winter, because those things, as Rashi explains, even in the summer where it was dry, they would become ruined they would become nimas, they would become ruined even in the summer, so you wouldn't be allowed to throw those things. The rule seems to be is that if it's going to get ruined, you're not allowed to throw it. If it's not going to get ruined, it wouldn't be necessarily such an issue. You're not allowed to ruin it, exactly. But, but, but bread is the exception. You're not allowed to throw bread. That's no, the other says you like to wash your hands with it. He yeah, seems to that, yeah, have a shtickle yeah. exception. That's true. Taka. I was stopping your chaver. The two dots at the bottom of minimum base. We'll pick up tomorrow with an aleph, amud aleph. Everyone have a wonderful day.